Chapter 8 Eugen von Böhmbarwerk Economist, Minister, Aristocrat In Austria, hardly any other economist has achieved the same kind of fame as Böhmbarwerk, and with no other have such wide sections of the population come into contact. Admittedly, in an altogether trivial sense, his portrait adorned the hundred-shilling note that was in circulation from 1984 to 2001. Eugen von Böhm-Barbeck was in many respects considered an exception in professional circles too. He was one of the most quoted economists of his time, earned an excellent reputation internationally, taught on the largest law faculty in the world, and more than once occupied the office of finance minister of a major European power. Along with Karl Menger and Friedrich von Wieser, he constituted the founding triumvirate of the Austrian school. Economist Ewald Schams, a former military officer, recalled a glorious campaign, characterized by harmonious cooperation and downright tactical unity. Menger had declared the fundamental principle, Wieser had provided the factual structure, and Böhm Barwerk had taken on the duty to fight. He was the fighter in the cause of modern theory. The third of four children, Eugen Böhm, was born in Brünn in 1851. His father was knighted as a Ritter von Barwerk in 1854 while vice-president of the Moravian governorship. Upon his father's early death, Eugen, only six years old, moved with his mother to Vienna. As mentioned in the previous chapter, he met Friedrich von Wieser, with whom he would develop a lifelong friendship while attending the Viennese Schottengymnasium. The two friends always sought to outdo each other in school and later graduated at the same time with degrees in law. After his graduation, Böhm-Barwerk joined the Lower Austrian Finance Department. With the help of Karl Menger, the two friends received two-year stipends to a study at the universities of Heidelberg, Leipzig and Jena in 1875. In Heidelberg, Böhm-Barwerk dealt for the first time in a seminar paper with the subject that would occupy him for the rest of his life, the relationship in economics between the present and the future. One year later, he put the prototype of his later Argeo theory into writing. Upon his return to Vienna, he continued working in the finance department and was the first of Karl Menger's students to receive his Habilitation for Rechte und Verhältnisse vom Standpunkt der Volkswirtschaftlichen Güterlehre, 1881. In the same year, the young lecturer and civil servant married his friend's sister, Baroness Paula von Wieser. The marriage, described as harmonious, remained childless. In 1882, Böhm-Barwerk was entrusted with teaching a course in economics at the University of Innsbruck. Compared with Vienna, then the world's fifth largest city, the University of Innsbruck, having the smallest law faculty in the Austrian monarchy with few more than 200 students and 16 lecturers, did not appear as a particularly attractive career step. Sentenced to Chernovitz, pardoned to Innsbruck, is an adage handed down to this day in university circles in Vienna. Nonetheless, the Innsbruck years were the happiest time of his life for the glowing Tyrol enthusiast. Before long, he was appointed to a non-tenured, and in 1884 to a tenured professorship. That same year saw the publication of Geschichte und Kritik der Kapitalzinstheorie, History and Critique of Interest Theory, Volume 1 of Capital and Interest in which he dissected practically all theories of capital interest with tremendous rigor and astuteness. Though announced, the second volume was delayed, one reason being Böhm Barwerk's election to dean of faculty. Another was that combining the theory of subjective value with his theory of capital proved to be rather difficult. As a kind of preliminary study, he published a two-part essay about the theory of subjective value in Konrad's Jahrbücher in 1886. This would be modified slightly, and included in the already promised second volume, The Positive Theorie des Capitals, 1889. With this easy-to-read and polished presentation, Böhm Barwerk was able to distinguish himself as a sword of the new direction, and made a crucial contribution to the further promulgation of the Austrian school. The two volumes, Geschichte und Kritik der Kapitalzinstheorie and Positive Theorie des Kapitals, published several times under the single title Kapital und Kapitalzins, were translated into English and established Bohm Barwerk's international reputation. This was boosted even more by lively controversies and polemics. Bohm Barwerk fought on four academic fronts simultaneously, 
against a historical school's aversion to theory, against a Marxist exploitation theory, against the various cost-value theories, and against the efforts some were making to show that the Austrian school took no socio-political responsibility. Bombarmek's attempts to return to a professorship in Vienna and to be the successor of either Lorenz von Stein or Luyo Brentano were in vain. He finally took a post in the finance ministry, which at that time managed with a staff of just 121 civil servants and 67 supporting staff. One of his first tasks was to revive the abandoned preparations for a comprehensive tax reform. Bombarmek remained a civil servant up until 1904, Three times he was finance minister, 1895, from 1897 to 1898, and from 1900 to 1904. And in 1899, he was awarded a lifelong membership of the Herrenhaus. Apart from working on the tax reform of 1886, in the course of which a progressive income tax of no more than 5% was introduced, he also succeeded in reducing the government's interest burden by converting public debt. A balanced budget was of particular importance to Ben Barak because he believed it was the only thing that would secure the stability of monetary value. He did not shy away from using all the tricks of an experienced bureaucrat to block status-seeking, politically motivated projects that lacked secure funding, such as a shipping canal network for the whole of the monarchy. His maxim was that a finance minister should always be prepared to resign, but at the same time should always behave as if his desire was never to resign. He resigned from the post permanently in 1904, when excessive demands from the military finally threatened to strain the budget. In addition to his work in administration, Bernbarbeck devoted two hours a day to research and maintained close ties with the University of Vienna, initially as an examiner and, after 1891, as an honorary professor. In 1892, he contributed to the founding of the magazine Zeitschrift für Volkswirtschaft, Sozialpolitik und Verwaltung, Journal of Economics, Social Policy and Administration, and also played an important and integral role in the Gesellschaft Österreichischer Volkswirte. After resigning as minister for the third time, he accepted a professorship which had been specially created for him. Bimbavec's lectures were masterpieces, thanks both to his systematic clarity throughout and to his calm, considered, and, one might say, intellectually buoyant presentation. Among those who later met in his seminar, in which an unusually open discussion ethos was prevalent, were such eminent names as Ludwig von Mises, Franz Weiss, Richard von Striegel, Felix Zomari, Emil Lederer, Rudolf Hilferding, Otto Bauer, Nikolai Bukharin, or Josef Schumpeter. All in all, Böhm Barwerk came across as a somewhat formal, but warm-hearted and empathetic person, the political economist in the true sense of the word, who from 1911 onward acted as president of the Kaiserliche Akademie der Wissenschaften, Imperial Academy of Sciences, died at the age of 63 while on vacation in Kramsach in the state of Tyrol in August of 1914.